Welcome to the December the 21st, 1999 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring you the history of our city and some of the important people that have made history and that are continuing to make history this very day. We are very honored today as we tape the very last of the histories of Grand Prairie in this particular century, in this December 1999. And we're going to be speaking with his honor, the mayor of Grand Prairie, Mayor Charles England. And welcome to the set, Your Thank Honor. Thank you, Ruthie. Thanks. It's good to be here again. Mm, yes, we're glad to have you with us. And as you are the only mayor for Grand Prairie that will be serving in two centuries, because the city of Grand Prairie began on March the 20th, 1909. So we're actually only 90 years old as a city. And our first mayor, Mayor Lively, did not begin his tenure until 1909. So you're going to be our first. Isn't that exciting? Well, that is exciting. That, it's, uh, it, I didn't know that till I got here today. I yes. Mean, so. See, we're, so. we're making you important a first. You, you need to have a lot of firsts. You've had a lot of firsts as the mayor. But we wanted to end um, uh, the history of this 1999 with a 30-minute uh, set to with you to talk about Grand Prairie. Uh, you began in 1992 with your wings flapping hard and you have soared uh, with Grand Prairie to the very highest. And we're so excited that you have been our mayor over these years. But we'd like to just talk about what's happened in 1999. What are you excited about? And uh, before I ask you that question, I'd like for you to look out into your camera and tell us about the real Charles England because uh, I've done a history of you and Janice, your beautiful wife, but I want to talk about just Charles England now. Uh, tell me about your family a little bit. Uh, let's have a little bio here at the beginning of right. this. Right, uh, I'm not going to tell you everything. And, uh, but you're going to name uh, your Trump grandkids. And I talk, well, I'm sure not going to talk about the mid-50s, but, uh, no, no, no. but I'll tell you, uh, I, could, you know, I was born uh, in 1939 down in Johnson County in Venus, Texas, and. Uh, uh, moved to Grand Prairie when uh, when I was in the seventh grade. Yes. Uh, with my aunt and uncle Frank and Juanita Thompson, who've been my my mom and dad for many many years, and love them dearly. And any I came to Grand Prairie then and uh, lived next door to your sister, uh, Mary Boyd. What a special person she was, and uh, so I was kind of raised uh, between. Uh, my aunt uh, Juanita Thompson, as we call her in the family, Tuta, and between her and Mary Boyd, they kept me, tried to keep me straight. That was a full-time job. But uh, I went to, to, back then it was Grand Prairie Junior High, the only junior high in, in, uh, in town. Mr. Keel had to remind me, I, you know, I remembered it being Lee Junior High when I was there, and he had to remind me a few years ago, no, it was really Grand Prairie Junior High then. And, uh, but uh, went through Grand Prairie Junior High School, and. Met Janice in the eighth grade and uh, uh, went through Grand Prairie High School. Graduated. We graduated in 1957, and I went off to college. And but you played in the Gopher Bowl. Played in the Gopher Bowl. I was on the f team the, that first played team. in the first game in the Gopher Bowl. Uh, got some great some great times. And uh, oh, talking over the 50s were some great years. And uh, you know I can remember almost like it was yesterday. And uh, back during those high school years, we you had went some away great to college. Years. Went away to college in freshman year, and gosh, couldn't get along without Janice. Couldn't study very well. Had my mind on her, so we just uh, we got married at the end of our freshman year in college, and that was in 1958. And uh, and I transferred to uh, came back home and went to work at Sears Roebuck and uh, uh, out on uh, Jefferson Abram Street, and, and commuted back and forth to North Texas State, and graduated in 1961. And during that time, Rhonda, we Rhonda, our firstborn, was was born and. And then Kirk came along the day I graduated uh, from college. Kirk was born, so we had uh, we were pretty busy during the during the '60s there, raising uh, raising children and going to school. And um, so uh, uh, we lived in Grand Prairie. Started in Avion Village, like so many people yes. uh, here in the city did. They've been here any length of time. We started out in Avion Village, and uh, uh, you know it, it's Grand Prairie's been been home for so many years and, and very special to Janice and I both. We've, and you uh, served on the school board. I did serve on the school board <coughs> uh, back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've always said, you know, for the 
uh, probably the toughest political job anywhere, I think, is, is serving as a member of the school board. Yes, sir. My goodness, that's what well, you know. Mr. Jackson was on the school board for many years, mm -hmm. too. And uh, um, I, I've, every time I think being mayor is kind of a tough uh, assignment politically, I think back when I was on the school board. And then I realized being mayor is really a cakewalk. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the school board, I, I really have a lot of respect and admiration for those people that mm -hmm. serve. But uh, uh, in 1967, uh, I guess, I opened uh, my business here in Grand Prairie. After a long career with Sears, I opened uh, an insurance agency. And that was like 32, 33 years ago. And doesn't seem possible. Doesn't seem possible, no. Uh, but uh, and I've been uh, in, in, had a business here in Grand Prairie, a state form insurance agency. How about your new office? My son and I are, are building a new office out in, on Carrier out in Westchester. We're excited about that. Uh, we're ready to get started. It's all surveyed now. They got that completed last week, and okay. and Smith and Mortar are busy on the plans. We're about ready to get started. Oh, it sounds wonderful. That's kind of moving you a little bit south, though. Is that yeah, going to be acceptable? Uh, well, you know, when you you know back in, in when South Grand Prairie was first built, there was us, but but now you know when you have two grandchildren going to to, to south, well, you mm -hmm. you become impartial real quick. You and, become a park warrior you all there, of a sudden, that's right, don't you? The warriors, gosh, what. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. school that's has turned out to be, but uh, so we had Rhonda first, then Kirk, and then Lori came along. Uh, uh, she Down was the, the third line. born, right? And uh, Kirk and Lori still live in Grand, they live in Green Prairie. Uh, Lori's married to Brian Arnold, uh, an attorney here in town. Kirk uh, met Marcy down at Southwest Texas when he was in school there. So Rhonda, the oldest, lives in Spring, mm -hmm. and uh, her husband's uh, is a physician anesthesiologist down in Spring. Rhonda likes spring. The only problem with that, it's about 200 miles too far from Grand Prairie. Yes, she it could, is. Uh, but uh, she and her mother talk like they're next door every day. So, uh, but uh, we have very close. Our, we've been real blessed with with three wonderful children, and they've all done real well. Yeah, how about the grandkids? We do. We just mm -hmm. we have, <coughs> have about six of those. Uh, each one of our children have two. Okay. Uh, you want to name them? I, I do. Let's all see. Right. Rhonda. The one in spring, she has uh, she has the oldest and the youngest, Clayton, who's 16, and Jana, the, who's nine. They live in spring, and Kirk has two boys, Charlie and uh, little Charlie. He knew who to name. He knew. Kirk was wise. Kirk was oh, a wise one. Was, Kirk wanted all the state, and uh, you know, yeah. uh, he he made a lot of headway. Made a brownie there. points, didn't he? Uh, but Charles Robert, he's uh, he's Kirk's oldest, and then and Sam, they're both uh, students at uh, Jackson. All right. Middle school and Lori and Brian have two, Clint and Katie, and uh, they just built a new home out in Lake Ridge and uh, live in Grand Prairie in the Cedar Hill School District. So uh, we have two now in Cedar Hill. And, uh, I didn't get to vote on that, I can tell you, but uh, <laughs> but they're doing great. Clint uh, and Katie both have adjusted real well and moved into a new school district. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're fortunate we get to see our family a lot. As a mayor and a husband, and a father and a grandfather. Uh, do you find yourself at odds with uh, all of these different schedules that you need to keep? How do you keep track of all this good stuff? Man? Well, I've got, you know, Janice is, uh, she's mm -hmm. pretty good on details. She kind of mm -hmm. keeps me on point between, okay. Uh, okay. between Janice and Carolyn at, uh, at the city. They, uh, and that's a challenge to, yes. to keep me uh, where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good at keeping a calendar, so they, mm -hmm. they, they keep a good one, though. And, uh, but uh, it, it's busy, but I like being busy. You know, somebody asked me when I was going to retire, and my answer to that is, you know, I don't, don't say retirement. Don't tell them anything. Retirement couldn't be any better than what it is right now, so um, as far as my business is concerned, and, you know, as far as being mayor is concerned, you know, the worst thing a politician can do is, is wear it as welcome, and we'll just see how that, uh, how that goes. Uh, I've had fun being, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it, how much we appreciate you you serving or, or taking of your time and, and sacrifices. And I've never felt like being mayors. I've never felt like it's been any sacrifice. I've I've loved every day of it. It's been an honor to to be mayor in Green Prairie, and you know I've I've had a love affair with this city since I got here back in the in the early 50s, and uh, it's been a real thrill to be the mayor and, and an honor. I mean, I and it's been I don't feel like any sacrifice at all. It's been a great time to be mayor in Green Prairie the last eight years. Yes. Uh, I came in, and timing is, is important, in, yes. I guess, in everything. And and I came in at a time when the economy was going very well, and and uh, we had a in the last six years for sure we've had a great uh, um, uh, a great council, and and uh, and the staff has has really 
and the council worked so good together, and I, I think we made a lot of progress. I get a lot more credit for that than, than I should, but uh, uh, I'll just, just go ahead and take the credit. Um, yes, and, yes. But uh, the times certainly have been important in the staff and, and the kind of council you have. Uh, that, that's what makes uh, the city run and, and, and grow like we have. It's been a good eight years, and, and I'm grateful for that. What do you do for a hobby other than going hunting and, and going down to the lake? And uh, tell me about your uh, your leisure time. Well, I, you know, my hobby, and, and I, I'm not a golfer. Uh, I think I'm the only one in the family that doesn't play golf. And, and you know, it, it's, you're supposed to play golf and relax. If I play golf, I get frustrated. If I can't win, I don't want to play. And, <laughs> And so I don't, uh, and I don't win very often. But really, my hobby is is really politics. I mean, yes. I've told so many people that that being mayor is really like, is my golf, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy it. And uh, of course, we love to go to the lake. Uh, we have a lake uh, house down at, at Whitney, and it's a it's a great getaway. And we go down there almost every weekend, unless there's something really big going on in the city. And of course, when you got a mayor pro tem like I've got right now, I can even go more often. And uh, you know, it's a real honor to have you serving as Mayor Pro Tem, and it's allowed me to really to do a lot of things I haven't always got to do. Well, you're mayor. you're just pretty laid back, anyhow, Mayor. Uh, uh, sometimes, and so most of the times, when you really get on point, it's the things that we really need you there for. Like when uh, when we had J.C. Swadley, we named the fire station number one in honor of J.C. Swadley Jr. You were there. And, and those are the things that really count with the people, and I think the people recognize well, this. Well, it's, a, you know, uh, and I don't even think I, after the, we honored J.C. the other day, and I don't think I even got to mention I want to do it now, that, that you know, it was really, I, I always think about those things, you know, after we should have, but you thought of that and, and brought it to my attention, and I appreciate you doing that. I can't think of anybody that deserved uh, to be honored any more than J.C. Swadley. He's done a lot for this city the historical preservation he's been involved in as well as a family that's been so important to Grand Prairie. So that was an honor and I'm just glad you uh, you kind of brought that up and, and whispered in my ear we might ought to give consideration to that. Yes, but, oh, that, yeah. that just came about. You and Frank uh, Robertson, uh, any time I have anything I want them to carry the ball, I, I tell you too, and you carry it all the way over the goal line yeah. and that's, that's really important. It's really important to the city of Grand Prairie, Texas. Thank you. Now, uh, what's happened in 99 that's so exciting that uh, has been a wonderful year, of course, but what do you think are the best things that's happened to the city in 99? Well, I wish I'd known you were going to ask me that question. I'd have made, I would have made some notes, but uh, uh, 99 has been a great year. Uh, you know, the, we've, the continued development out around I-20 and, uh, uh, and Carrier Parkway and uh, from Carrier all the way to Great Southwest, I mean, the southern part of the city just continues to develop. And How about the peninsula? And the peninsula, the peninsula, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Yes. I think we're going to have uh, uh, some really, uh, really great development out there. But I've learned one. If I haven't learned anything else in the last eight years, I've learned that don't have a premature groundbreaking. I mean, That's it. I've, uh, we've had too many groundbreakings where it, it never did come to pass. And, and uh, I, I'm really hopeful that the peninsula will develop uh, like we want it to. I think it will, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to wait and until uh, we see the mm -hmm. you know the the other side get their their finances in order and their plan. I think that I think it'll happen though, and it's going to that's going to be a great development if it if it if it comes to pass. And I, I'm optimistic that in the in you know the Lynn Creek uh, Park. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I mean the cat the cat's kind of out of the bag on that. You know uh, um, that that we're negotiating with with TRA and hopefully. Get uh, get that park to make a city park. I think we can make a park that'll be second to none in the state if if we are able to, to get control of, of that land. So there's a lot of things uh, a lot of things pending. You know there were. Um, uh, I guess, How about your election? You just had an election. Uh, two or well, three issues and uh, that's right. a lot and, of money you know, going and, and to exchange uh, You know there's nothing like an election to humble a politician. Oh, and, uh, that is true. That, uh, uh, you know, and I and I look back at that, and I thought, hey, the people spoke, and yeah. um, you know, uh, and I think they spoke pretty loud and pretty clear. And uh, uh, but uh, two of those issues that were were three issues on the on the on the ballot, of course, mm -hmm. and the quarter cent sales tax to build uh, the motor speedway uh, that failed, and and so 
you know, you look back and you can second guess yourself, and, but I, I probably didn't do as good a job as I should. In fact, I know I didn't. It's really explain to the people really what we were trying to do. I think a lot of people felt like we were trying to build a racetrack for somebody else. And the fact of the matter was that the city was going to own that racetrack. It was our it own was racetrack. It was going to be ours, yes. And uh, we had somebody who was going to pay $15 million as part of the construction. But I don't think it came off. I don't think we did a good job of explaining that. And probably the election was called too soon after the school bond election. It's, it's, I think any time you ask the voters twice within six weeks to, to uh, to go to their pocketbook and $140 million school bond election and then back for a, another half cent sales tax increase. I think that was probably too much, too quick. And uh, I can tell you this, that the ones that needed to pass, passed, and I'm grateful for that. That's yes. the school. The most important election was the school bond election. And that one passed with flying colors. And then the, the quarter cent for parks is, is you know, How anybody, badly did we need that? Oh, that, that was an absolute must. The city, I think the city's really measured in uh, to a large extent, at least first impressions by, by the by your school district and your park system. And we haven't had any bond money since 1982 for parks and our parks at one time were kind of the show place of the Metroplex, but we, uh, they've deteriorated a lot in the last few years and because of our rapid growth we certainly need uh, uh, two more major parks to be, be built. And uh, so I think the people recognize that and I think they voted wisely. They usually they, they usually do, and, and so I, th I think the right ones that needed to be passed, the most critical ones passed, and uh, we'll just uh, we'll just go on down the road. I think the future, I guess I'm more excited about anything about the future of Green Prairie. I, uh, with our location and uh, right in the center of the Metroplex and our proximity to DFW, two interstates running through the city, I mean, we would really have to shoot ourselves in the foot to keep from, keep from prospering and, and growing in a in a way that that's going to be that's going to be good and healthy. You know, I think we've. Pro I think you know. I don't ever like to be last, right. but it might be. I, I've thought about this a lot. It might be good that we missed out on the on the real building boom in the in the in the eighties, middle eighties, when Arlington and Irving were doing all their growing because we've been able to look at a lot of the things that they did. They did a lot of things right, and and uh, and I admire both of those cities. But they made some mistakes, and I think we've learned from those. And so with all the growth we've got going now, I think we've we've learn some, some of the mistakes that Arlington and Irving made, particularly in the area of infrastructure. And I think we learned a lesson that if you're going to have this kind of growth, you've got to keep building the new roads and expand the ones you've got. You can't, you need to do that as you're growing. And we've done that. Uh, gosh, I don't know how many hundreds of miles of new road we put in this last year overlay. We're going to build into Camp Wisdom in, in, the, in this next year in okay. 2000. We're going to expand and uh, that into a, to a major thoroughfare from 360 to over to Lake Ridge. Um, How about the I-20 uh, out at Carrier? I-20 and You're Carrier. You're working on that, aren't you? Carrier Parkway, we've already appropriated the money for it to be expanded from Crossland all the way up to Westchester, and my goodness, we certainly need that. If You you know, I said uh, when I first got elected, I hope my dream someday was to see a traffic jam in Grand Prairie. And, and you I did. thought, well, I, I really came to maybe a little bit too soon. I'd rather say about the time I left, but but uh, you know there's certainly traffic congestion at, at Interstate 20 and Carrier. The councils recognize that. We recognize it last year and, and have appropriated the money and it's under design and buying right away. And I know people get impatient, and I do too. It, it just seems like it takes so long to get those kind of projects completed. But I can tell you that that project is an important one. It's 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 they're working on it as, as we speak and. Uh, Beltline Road also. Uh, I know Tom met with Irving, Tom Hart, our city manager, met with Irving city manager and, and our county commissioner Ken Mayfield this week about the expansion of, of uh, uh, Beltline Road from, uh, uh, from the racetrack all the way up to Rock Island and uh, that's the, the city of Irving and Grand Prairie, TxDOT and the county are all working very closely together. That's going to be happening pretty soon. So I think we're on top of the things we, along with our growth, we can't just sit back and and uh, and relax. We've got to. It, it keeps you keeps you busy to to keep up with it. And I think Grand Prix is doing that. So. Thirteen eighty two. You finally got oh, it my. open, Mayor. That that one that that was a toughie, wasn't it? That was, and I'm so glad that it. You know, and I. Uh, if you haven't driven down thirteen eighty two from I twenty to to three hundred three, you need to. It's really it's really improved the the traffic flow, and I, I'd have to believe it. Even the people that live out there in that neighborhood. Are, are proud of that now. I think it, it, it 
improve the whole appearance of the neighborhood, but the traffic, it was an absolute must. We had to get another north-south uh, uh, artery uh, completed. Of course, we're going to build the overpass over Jefferson and the railroad tracks and Main Street, and that's been approved by TxDOT, and, and uh, should, construction should be complete on that in 2001. We're buying the right-of-way right now. We've already bought several pieces of the right-of-way, and uh, the design, the plans are, are completed. They're buying right-of-way. It's been funded by TxDOT, so, and that's going to even make 1382 a real yes. major thoroughfare when we get the overpass, so the trains don't mm -hmm. don't uh, slow you up. And, and uh, so I'm excited about it. I noticed that the Sowell track on Northeast Grand Prairie, right off of I-30, they're doing a lot of things there. Are you working on frontage roads for I-30? We are. I, I have met with TxDOT just uh, two weeks ago. The 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 frontage roads from MacArthur uh, along the uh, south side of uh, I-30, those service roads have been approved. Those are going to be construction, even though the racetrack's not going there. And I, and I hope people will recognize that, even though the racetrack didn't get approved by the voters, that's a great piece of real estate. Yes, it is. And there's going to be some good quality development out there. Jim Sal's a quality, is a quality developer, and, um, and I'm, I'm convinced that uh, even though the racetrack didn't go, that, that uh, there will be some good development there. But service roads are a must. We've got to have that. And, and Jim Sal, along with the city and the county, and, and TxDOT have all jumped in and worked together on that project. It's, it's been funded, so it's, it's on go. That's How about it. Lone Star Park? Lone Star Park continues. Great? Yeah, you know, uh, and, and you look back, and whether you like horse racing or whether you don't, uh, I don't think anybody could deny that, that since that track's been built that it's brought a lot of positive attention to Grand Prairie. It kind of got the, the attention of the developers and builders in the Metroplex that, that, hey, if they can build a $105 million facility without, really with, with no problems, that, and, and it just kind of brought us back into the limelight. And, and uh, even though there hasn't been a lot of uh, construction around Lone Star Park, it's, it's brought a lot of attention to Grand Prairie, and, and I believe it's had a lot to do with our with our growth, it, because it, it, as I said, it brought attention to us. And anything and, else uh, going to happen in that area where they oh, are I'm, located? Oh, I'm real. You know, mm -hmm. people get impatient. I'm the most impatient of all. I mean, the I Ford wanted, company's uh, coming in. The Ford company is under construction, and yes. that will that'll will be completed in the next 18 months. But I think uh, where the old wildlife park was, uh, Lone Star Park, Mr. Kaminsky is is working hard to get that developed. And I think if you look back at when DFW was built, I think everybody thought immediately. Everything would just spring up right around it, and, and it, it didn't. Hasn't. But now it started to. Yes, now, if you look at Grapevine and you look at Irving, then then after 15 or 20 years there, it really started to develop. That's going to be around Lone Star Park will be developed quality development. I, I really believe that as much as I today as I ever did. And it's but we have to be patient, and we can't really all always as politicians dictate when developers want to build. But everybody knows that's the geographic center of the Metroplex. It's got great access. 161 is now uh, out of Judge Sanders' court. That's going to come in on the back side of that property. Uh, 161's got a, they're buying the right of way for it now. You're, so you're flanked by 161, by Beltline, and by I-30. And that's going to be a great a great piece of land. Uh, How badly developed. do we need 161? Mr. Jackson got hung on a snag on 360 yesterday afternoon at 430. And I thought he was going to have a coronary when he got home. He said, do you all know what kind of traffic there is on 360? I said, not all of 360 is Grand Prairie, Mr. Jackson. But with 161, don't you think we really need oh. that post haste? Ruthie, we've, we've needed it more than, you know, we always believed we needed it, and TxDOT did, but now all you have to do is go on 360 in the afternoons. It's a parking lot. Beltline Road's a parking lot. Valley View, Roy Orr Boulevard's a parking lot. And, and Loop 12. Loop 12's a parking lot. It's an absolute uh, uh, must, and of course, we're, you know, we're a few years behind on that, but that's, uh, that's the way it, uh, uh, it happened. Uh, I wish it was already on. When I drive into Irving and Carrollton, see it already under construction there, I, I, I get very frustrated, but but uh, it's now got the green light. At least it's out of Judge Sanders' court, and and uh, they're buying the right of way, and it's it's going to be a real great uh, economic. Uh, Will it be a toll booster. road? Oh, I don't I don't know. I mean, it, it, that's too early. Uh, too early. To tell right now, we're going forward with it, and with TxDOT is, is a um, is a freeway, and and. Uh, um, who knows what the future will hold, but we, they've designed it as a freeway. They're buying the right-of-way as a freeway, and so, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, tow roads seem to be kind of uh, catching on again, particularly over in the North Dallas area. But whether it's going to work for Grand Prairie Irving or not, um, I think it's too early to tell, really. We have about two minutes left on the interview. Uh, Lewis said we have three. But I want you to look out into your camera. And first of all, I want you to thank your family uh, for allowing you to be mayor because uh, that's a sacrifice to them. Now, you love it and you give your all at being mayor, night and day and all of the other good stuff, but I want you to take an opportunity, and then I want you to thank the people of Grand Prairie for letting you be mayor, because they have given you the green light more than they have any mayor recently, and I'd like for you to take some time and just well, uh, be a personal person. Thank you, it's, yeah. uh, well, I, you thank know, the I told family you earlier for... that my, well, you know, what a great family I have, and. And when they can put up with a politician for eight years, you know they're they're really special. And all the calls. And Janice has has been a great uh, a great first lady. She uh, she doesn't like the limelight, and she kind of stays in the background. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I can tell you, she loves Grand Prairie just like I do, and very supportive. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better for a better spouse than 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 Janice. And, and of course, the kids, uh, the grandkids, they love you know me being mayor most of the time. Uh, they like to ride in the parades. I think everybody that goes to the you know, the, the rides in the parade, I think, gets to ride in the, in the, in the front of the parade, and and, uh, and everybody that, uh, to the racetrack gets to sit in the suite. But, yes, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> so they've been kind of they've been kind of spoiled, spoiled, but it's been fun. I mean, they've yeah. enjoyed it, and, and uh, uh, but the but the kids, and it's some it's you know it's it's tough for them, but the, but they've uh, Kirk and Lori are here every day, and and they handle it uh, uh, real well. They're very supportive. You know what they want me to do. We're we're going to all sit down sometime over the holidays and 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 talk about it as to what the f future because it's got you've got to have the support of, of the family yeah. if you, if you're really going to enjoy it be successful and I've been blessed to have that support for the last seven and a half years. So, how about uh, how about your constituency? Well, you know, the that's of Prairie, Texas. I think the worst thing a politician one minute one you know a politician has to be real cautious and be able to recognize when he's worn out he's welcome. And, and, and I don't know, I mean, I've been eight years and I've been, I'm very grateful, honored. I mean, I, I can't think of enough words to say how, what an honor and a privilege it's been to be mayor. It's been a fun, it's been a fun part of my life. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed, some days I've enjoyed more than others. Yes. I can tell you that. But, but most every day has been a real, uh, real pleasure. And, and I just appreciate the people that have, have, you know, have had enough confidence in me to put me in office for four terms. I'm, I'm real grateful for that. I'll, I'll never, never forget. I might have made some mistakes, and I look back at some of the things that, that uh, I mean, I know I have. I mean, uh, we don't uh, talk but about I've never, that. I can tell you this, I know, and I know you have them. We might have made some mistakes. We've never made a mistake. we never made a mistake of the heart. And, That's and right. uh, we've always, but I look back at some of those things. We should write a book about the prison, about the racetrack, about the speedway, how, you know. Uh, All the good they, stuff. Some people didn't think there was good an ideas as I did, but. Uh, it's been fun. Love it. Thank mayor, you. you're wonderful, and thank you very much. We're proud to have you our mayor. We're looking forward to 2000 when you're going to be our, our continuing mayor in the two millenniums. And well, thank, you thank, for, you. thank you for being here. Thank you. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.